Ah, see him a beast when you hear that sound like. Ah, yeah, beat on the beat when you hear that sound like. Ooh, yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like. Ha, yeah, me, I'm a G bring he in the sound like. Mike Owens here. I'm joined by Dangerous Davy Grant, who is back in action Saturday night. Not only is he back in action, he's back in action on British soil. It feels like an absolute lifetime ago since Davy's fought in, in England. Uh, Davy, always a pleasure, my man. How are things with you today? Uh, thanks for having us on, mate. I appreciate it. No, the pleasure's all mine. I, I talked about it off the top, but I have got to ask you. I think I checked the record four or five years since since a fight in, in London. How does it feel to have the uh, fight week in the capital? Yeah, oh, mate, I'm absolutely over the moon. I've been fighting everywhere, but do you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's great to go and fight in London. It was like it was always one of my dreams to go and fight in the O2 and like to get to to experience it again. It's fantastic, man. Well, I know you out. We were on the two hundred four card, the one down in Manchester. What were those experiences like, and how does it compare to say a Las Vegas fight night? I mean, yeah, it's a little bit. It, it is different. Like you know, when you've got all uh, all most of the crowd behind you, it's mm. it's. It, it's an absolute buzz. You know, the walkout's something else. And then uh, a lot of my Vegas fights have been in, in the apex, so it's like polar opposite, do you know what I mean? I don't mind it at all. I mean, honestly, as long as I'm fighting, I don't really care where I fight, but but yeah, I'm really looking forward to walking out in front of a home crowd. It's, it's, it is quite bizarre, and it might just be the way the, the chips have fell, but it seems like some of the Brits have been on every single British card and some of the Brits haven't. Like I look at like yourself and Danny Roberts is another one who has seemed to be on those Las Vegas Apex shows. Is there? Do you think there was a particular reason that you maybe pissed off one of the matchmakers and got stuck on the on the Apex cards, or do you think it's your circumstance? I don't think so. Not, not, not to my knowledge, no. But yeah, I, I don't know why it is. It just uh, I, I don't know what it is. If it's restrictions getting in the country or what? Do you know what I mean? I'm not not really sure. But nevertheless, I'm pleased to be on it. Hundred percent. Uh, Daniel Marcos is the opponent undefeated, uh, coming off the what the uh, is uh, first win back in January in the UFC. What have you made them? Give me your scouting report. Sorry. Give me your scouting report on the upcoming on your upcoming opponent. Oh, right. I mean, yeah, like he's he's decent. He comes. He definitely comes for a scrap. Um, unbeaten. So he's bring he's bringing a lot of tools to the table. Um, likes to stand up, and I like to stand up. So I mean, we just meet in the middle. Find out who's the best man. <laughs> Hundred percent. It, it it almost feels a little bit like the wild cards in a way. And I mean, I know he's got that that one win back in January, but I think he's fourteen or oh something like that. But a lot of fights on on the the regional kind of Brazilian Brazil scene probably difficult to get tape on. Um, yeah. is a little bit of this going in to, to going into the unknown, or is it just is it just about doing doing what Davey Grant does? Have you been able to put a solid game plan for this guy? I mean, I don't, yeah, I only usually watch like the last few fights of the guy anyway. And just sort of pick up on the reads off that, you know, like just like so what 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 different things they like to throw, what they do under pressure and all that, you know, like uh, even even if you're looking back on the early fights, it it doesn't make much of a difference, you know, everyone changes, everyone's constantly growing, and uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not really I'm not really too fussed, but but from what I've seen, I mean, yeah, he brings a good game. It's like a lot of things off his right side, and I'm just I, I think I think when we go. And put it to the test. I'm, I mean, I think I'm going to be just that little bit higher level than him. You know, I think I think I'm probably a highest level guy. No disrespect to him at all. Do you know what I mean? He's mm. definitely definitely a, a legit contender. I just think that um, I'm probably the most experienced guy he's ever fought. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, I've I've seen this structure of training camp. I know you've done did some a couple of weeks in Tiger Muay Thai. It seems to have had the bulk of training camp in Syndicate in Vegas, and then obviously just. Finished up, I think SBG South Shields is your primary gym in the UK. What has been the the key to structuring this training camp across those those three gyms? I mean, in all honesty, I, I mean, I, I I haven't stopped training since the start of the year. I, even the Sunsoft fight, uh, I just sort of just I, I took it on short notice, so I didn't put put like a like a full camp in it, if if you were. Mm. Uh, but I was just training constantly, and I wasn't banged up in the fight. So straight away, I was back training the next week. So it was more like having a hard spa mid camp. Do you know what I mean? And then, then I got twelve weeks to find out. I like had a few weeks, and then at twelve weeks to find out about this one. It just seemed like an absolute eternity. So I thought I'm just going to mix it up, you know, like do a little bit of traveling at the same time. So I just like a couple of my mates were going to Thailand. So I thought, well, I'll just go there, do like a like a holiday where I can just train. I was still doing a little bit of sightseeing, and then finishing up in Syndicate, and then at SBG South Shields TFT and Twins Box, and just. Just at home, just like sharpening up. It feels like I've been home for a full camp now. There's only been a couple of weeks, you know what I mean? 
it's, it's, I did want to mention actually because I saw a photo on your Instagram with um, a couple of other lads from the northeast, the Hardwick brothers, George and yeah. Harry. I think Harry Harry's on this upcoming Cage Warriors card the night before you guys, and then yeah. George has got the Cage Warriors shot. Um, where where do you rank them in terms of the hope for for uh, northeast MMA in terms of what they can do? Oh, I'm I'm very very excited to see them both perform. Yeah, I mean, both great guys. Um and definitely, definitely legit fighters. You know, like I, I think they're both gonna do fantastic, and it's it's great. You know, like there's a lot of talent up in the northeast, and uh, I'm sort of like the arse end of the country who get forget about a lot of the times. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm, I definitely think you're gonna be seeing those two making waves as a, 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 like in a very very near future. Excluding David Grant, give me your top five pound for pound fighters from the northeast. Who, who would you who would you rank in the top five? Right. Well, number one. It's probably Kurt Wobben, right? He's uh he was in the UFC a while ago, and uh honestly, mate, he's he's a fucking absolute animal. Like, and he's he's one of my best mates. You know what I mean? Uh, he can be out of the gym six months, still just come in and smash me. <laughs> <laughs> he's an absolute machine. And I mean, you've got I, it's hard because like. So many high level guys, you know, like we used to all train together. I could honestly, I couldn't pick you just five because I, I, that means I'd have to leave someone out. Do you know what I mean? So just give but me like, a list of who comes to mind. But like you've got like Alex Edmund, you've got Andrew Fisher, you've got Tommy Quinn, you've got James Mulher and Phil DeFries, Colin Fletcher, Ryan Scope, Ryan Roddy. Like fucking honestly, like there was some fantastic names out, there and we all used to get together and train, and it was. It, it was hard. It would be hard to just give you five. And on Ross Pearson, you know, Ross Pearson had a fantastic career. Lives in Australia now, but he's he's a northeast lad, you know. So like o- over the years, we've had some some fantastic names, mate. And even Mick Parkin is on this card as well. Another another yeah, Parkin, but yeah, exactly. Just keep on producing the good fighters. You know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, what's on the line? In this one, Davey, I mean, obviously you've come off that Rafael Sunstar win, which is, in terms of name value, a massive win, got a massive scalp. Oh, yeah. You've obviously got the Smolka win uh, backing that up as well previously. What is on the line in this one to kind of, in terms of your uh, position in the, in the Bantamweight division? I mean, I, I, I'm I'm just hoping to go and get the win. And like, I'm, it's not like a one that's going to propel me in any, any of the rankings or anything like that, but... I'm really, really more bothered about activity at the moment than rankings. You know, I just want to get as many fights in as I can. I still feel like I'm getting better. I still feel like I'm gaining experience as, like, as, as crazy as it is. I mean, I, I know I've been about this a long time now. I've been signed to the UFC for the last 10 years. Mm. But, yeah, I just want to take, honestly, any fight, any fight they give me, I'll, I'll take, no problems. I did want to mention that as well because I know that you've had your, um, your difficulties, let's say, with, with activity, whether that be through injury, whether that be through opponents yeah. pulling out. And it's been so nice to see you as active as you've been, probably since Jonathan Martinez seems to be the, the name that's, that's kind of ringing the bell, I think probably five fights in the last two years. What can you yeah. say about this kind of Davy Grant resurgence, if you like? It's just Maybe not necessarily in terms of results, but just in terms of the fact you've been able to be so active. Yeah, and it is. It's, it's it's everything I've ever wanted. You know, I've spent so much time on the sidelines and it was, honestly, I was pulling my hair out, man. It's... Uh... It's so nice to be finally getting like fights, and yeah, it's uh, even the like the performances and things. I feel like I'm fighting how I want to fight now. Do you know what I mean? And it is. It's been like a bit of an Indian summer where the the best of my career is sort of coming later on. But I still want to see how far this rabbit hole goes. You know, like honest man, I've still got loads of fighting left to do and some fantastic performances to put in. No, I don't doubt it at all. Um, in 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 this kind of Indian summer that you've alluded to, I think you've become a fan favorite. I'm not saying that you weren't a yeah. fan favorite previously, but I think you've really excelled in in that in that way. This last kind of four or five fights, internally Thank in the British you. market as well. What what do you anticipate the reactions going to be for this David Grant's homecoming in the O2? I mean, I'm for a good one, you know. You never know in this world, do you? you know what I mean? But no, I've got a lot of people coming down as. well. Well, and then uh, obviously the Englishman fighting in, in, in the O2, it should be a fantastic reception. I can't wait. 100%. Would, would you have been there if you went on the card? Uh, probably, yeah. You tr- yeah, you... I like to get to the as often as I can. It's, uh, uh, it's a fantastic atmosphere. Mm. No, it is, 100%. Well, um, what, one final question. Well, I've got two questions I'd like to finish on. 
Uh, but I'm going to yeah. go with this. This is normally my final question, but I'm going to switch it around for this one for special occasions, having you on, Davey. Um, <laughs> what I'd like you to do, and you can be as brief or as detailed as you like with this one, but I'd like you to give me a walkthrough of the perfect day on Saturday. So what happens when you wake up on Saturday morning to when you go to bed in the evening? Yeah, so maybe a nice lie in or wake up, uh, get some nice nice breakfast. You know, it's always nice to go and eat, you know what I mean? I, 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 I just sort of chill fight day, you know. Like, there's, there's nothing you can really do. So I'll be chilling, maybe go for a walk about the shops just to keep my mind occupied, you know, get to the arena, nice little warm-up. I don't really stress in the warm-up or anything, you know. Once I get to the arena, it's sort of like my zone, you know what I mean? And I... And I literally just can't get weird to get in there. And then, I mean, as soon as, as soon as I walk out, hopefully a fantastic reception and uh, go and get the knockout, you know, knockout wins. That's what I'm about. That's what everyone wants to see. A nice early knockout and then straight back in the gym and ready for the next one. I love it. I love it. Well, this is my final question and I wanted to keep this for you because one of my favourite quotes, there's a lot of big quotes, there's a lot of viral moments in MMA, but one of my favourite quotes is of yours, and it's on Brendan Fitzgerald's podcast. And if, if memory yeah. serves, the quote is, I've just, I love that I've dedicated my life to trying to be hard as fuck. I just think it's dead cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah, still feel like that? that? Do you still feel happy that you've dedicated your life to what yeah. you've done? Love it. Honestly, I absolutely love it. Honestly, I, I, like, I mean, I was saying to my wife last night, I was laying in bed thinking about how lucky I am. Do you know what I mean? Just for what I do, for the support network I've got around me. It's uh, honest, and I, I do. I thank my lucky stars, and and there is nothing fucking cooler, is there? You know, like just fucking trying to be harder every single day. That's it. That's that's the goal. You know what I mean? Uh, like it's fucking maybe a bit macho or a bit whatever. Do you know what I mean? But I love it. I love being in the gym. I love all the other fighters because everyone's sort of on the same wavelength. Do you know what I mean? And it's amazing how close you get to people punching them in the face. <laughs> It is. Even in those in those kind of losses that you had, the Cheeto loss and the Yanis loss recently, is there a particular particular guy who you look at, maybe a ranked above you, where you go, regardless of rank and regardless of getting to that belt, I just want to have a tear up with him because I know it'll be it'll be a, a fight. Oh, honestly, fucking hell, just about everyone in the top fifteen. You know, like the the bantamweight division stacked in it. You mm. know what I mean? So like, um. Yeah, any single one of them. Any single one of them. I think it's some fantastic fights to be made to go and get up there. I love it. I love it. Well, it all starts again Saturday night, my mate. It's fantastic yeah. to see you back in action. Fantastic to see you fighting on English shows. I wish you the best of luck. Have a great fight week and best of luck for the fight. My pleasure as always, mate. Thank you.